Karl Marx is one of the most influential philosophers of all time. Along with his partner, Frederick Engels, he developed theories about society, economics and politics. Theories that are now collectively referred to as Marxism. These theories influenced many socialist and communist regimes throughout the 20th century and his work continues to be read widely today by students, academics and politicians. Yet the origins of Marxism and the early life of the man who developed these ideas aren't particularly well known. Born in 1818 in the small Rhineland city of the Trier near the French border, Marx grew up surrounded by people with anti-establishment views, for many of those who lived in Trier supported revolutionary principles. Marx's own father wanted wider political representation and he also supported the local poor relief schemes. As a schoolboy, Marx wasn't a particularly distinguished student, though he was undoubtedly influenced by his school teacher who, as well as supporting philosophers like Rousseau and Kant, praised the French Revolution. Marx's school essays reflect this concern for the masses and a desire to improve the world. In 1835, when he was 17, he wrote that choosing a profession should be guided by the welfare of mankind and of our own perfection, and that the happiest man on earth is the man who has made the greatest number of people happy. Later, Marx gained a PhD in philosophy whilst at university. During his time as a student, he joined a group of radical thinkers known as the Young Hegelians, who read and discussed the ideas of German philosopher Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. Hegel was the first of the modern and significant German philosophers to confront the problem of a commercialised society, arguing that it could lead to servitude and a lack of freedom in the workplace. This idea wasn't new. Both Hegel and Marx were inspired by key figures from the 18th century Scottish Enlightenment, such as Adam Ferguson and Adam Smith. Hegel paraphrased the latter when he said the following. In the same ratio that the number of produced rises, the value of the labour falls. The labour becomes that much deader, it becomes machine work. The skill of a single labourer is impoverished to the last extreme of dullness. Factories and workshops base their existence on the misery of a class. The issue of religion proved to be divisive for the young Hegelians. Though Hegel himself was a Christian, many of his followers became disillusioned from religion. Bruno Bauer, for instance, argued that religion was an inversion of reality, openly denying the existence of Christ and claiming that concepts like God and spirit were simply stand-ins for human self-consciousness. Marx, despite coming from a religious family, had little respect for Judaism or Christianity and agreed with Bauer's assessment. He believed no philosophy was worth discussing unless it was atheistic. Robert Owen, a wealthy cotton spinner from Britain, played a key part in the development of Marxism. In 1817, during a national economic crisis, he proposed that unemployed workers be rehoused in rural communities. The idea was that competition would end and property would be shared. Owen hoped that this system would one day become the dominant form of organising workers. However, Moses Hess, a German intellectual, had arguably the most influence on the young Marx. Hess prophesied an imminent workers' revolution, describing this in terms that are similar to what Marx would go on to describe in the Communist Manifesto. Hess said that in an ideal society, exploitation would end and machines would free mankind and pave the way for social equity. He also said that the state would be replaced by a unified social life defined by cooperation between individuals. Though the men discussed here aren't the only people who inspired Marx, they are amongst the most important when addressing the topic of the origins of Marxism. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you found the video useful. I've recently written a history quiz book and there's a link in the description if you think you might be interested. Thank you once again and it's goodbye from me until next time.